The community of Moscow, Idaho, is still on the edge as a manhunt continues for the suspect in the murder of four college students last weekend and what investigators are characterizing as a targeted attack. The victims were found stabbed to death in a bed, showing appearing uh, some defensive wounds. Police are also searching for a large fixed blade, weapon described as a Rambo-style knife, which they believe was used in the massacre. Here with reaction, former FBI agent, homicide expert, and Fox News contributor Steve Burmaster, along with neuropsychologist Dr. Lauren Miller. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight um, to in this breaking news. Um, sir, I want to go to you first. Um, I, we've gotten drone footage of what it looks like. They're still looking at tire tracks. Um, they're still processing the scene. We know the BAU unit is in there to collect evidence as well. So tell me, what are they looking for in that house that can direct them to uh, this killer? Sure. In this particular case, there's a plethora of evidence uh, involved. And any time that there's a violent incident, there's going to be multiple pieces of evidence from blood, hairs, fiber, uh, shoe prints. And then potentially, if the individual was uh, operating a vehicle, there could be vehicle tracks on the outside. Uh, everything from even fingerprints and DNA. So there's a plethora of evidence. Uh, it's going to take a while. And one of the missing features of this particular case is the motive. And so we think of evidence as a bunch of uh, frayed uh, fibers. We can mend those together and they will lead us towards that motive. Uh, but in this case, uh, there is still some information yet unfounded as far as electronic information, interviews with numerous people, and of course the behavioral side, uh, taking a look at both the victims themselves and even the violent crime itself, pulling that all together. And I think investigators can use forensic intelligence to weave this together to help lead them to that motive. Steve, it's like you were reading my mind, that was the perfect segue for Doc. Doc, uh, the BAU unit is on the scene. They are trying to find a pattern here. We know the killer is at large, so they haven't been able to interview him to find that motive. What do you think the BAU unit is looking for to help capture this guy? What they should be looking for is the, the victimology and any particular uh, risk factors that these victims might have had. The circumstances of the crime strongly suggest that the, the killer um, had some personal cause uh, mm -hmm. as part of the motivation. We know uh, so far we've been told that it's not a robbery and the coroner's report indicated that there are no signs of sexual assault. So they, they should be looking for somebody who might have had a grudge. Um, felt slighted uh, by one or or all of the victims, um, but I, I tend to agree with what Dr. Baden said earlier. Um, it's it's likely that there was a primary target and that the other three might have been killed as collateral damage, either trying to come to the aid of the primary victim or because they were witnesses that could have I identified uh, the killer. Steve, you have a lot of experience with the BAU unit as well, with their partners when you were at the FBI. How quickly does it um, take, you know, to get that profile out so they can put it out to the public? Or do they even put it out to the public for us to find this guy? Uh, typically, it's kept close to the vest. Um, uh, it's mostly for investigative purposes. But depending on how complex the case is and how many victims are involved and the types of evidence that are pre presented in the case, it can take some time. Uh, there's a lot of things that they need to evaluate. They need to understand interviews. They need to really take a close look at the evidence that itself uh, to draw any type of conclusion when it comes to behavior. Uh, they can make some broad uh, investigatory steps uh, to help lead investigators, but when it comes back to really isolating the core uh, traits of an individual or individuals that might have perpetrated a crime, it's very difficult. It can take some time. Doc, I got to go, but I got to ask you this. Because the way the crime was committed, does it suggest that this was premeditated from your experience? Or do you know, know about that? A absolutely. And I, I think the nature of the weapon also speaks to that as well. You know, this is not a utility knife that somebody might just be carrying because they need a screwdriver or, you know, to, to cut the tag off their, their new clothes. Um, the, the nature of the weapon itself suggests that the, the person went there with intent to kill 
and, and I do believe it was a, a male as well, just statistically speaking yeah. in these sorts of cases, that's the, the sort of perpetrator you're going to be looking for. And um, uh, also to echo what m Dr. Baden said earlier, you know, we've only learned that there, each victim had multiple stab wounds, but I think there could be some clues there if there was one victim that had an exponentially or significantly uh, larger number of stab wounds than the others uh -huh. that suggests that the killer spent more time with that person and that that might that person might have been the primary target whereas the others might have just had to have um, uh, been killed as as collateral damage doc so much resourceful information steve thank you so much you as well sir thank you both hey sean hannity here hey click here to subscribe to fox news youtube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis you will not get it anywhere else